Alrighty guys, we'll go ahead and get started here with our SAM Evasion and Wild Weasel tutorial for DCS World here in the F-16C Block 50 Viper. Now we're cruising along the coast of Iran here and we've got an SA-6 uh, site set up out in front of us in order to be our model for uh, teaching you guys how to evade SAMs and how to Wild Weasel SAMs to protect your strike flights. So first thing we want to do is make sure we switch over our countermeasures to an appropriate countermeasures program in order to spoof um, any, any radar guided threats coming up at us. So I currently have a program set at the moment in order to release five bundles of chaff with a 0.5 interval between those bundles of chaff. Now throughout this video, I'm going to be periodically pausing the video in order to convey to you guys a more uh, intensive and complicated topics than I can convey to you guys while also flying and trying to avoid SAMs that are flying up at me at Mach 4 trying to kill me. So we'll keep that in mind and so don't freak out in case the sound cuts out, it's just me pausing the simulation in order to talk to you guys a little bit easier. Now, in the more modern jets in DCS world, we have a lot of ways that we can really help increase our situational awareness. We have helmet mounted displays and we have data links and we also have mission cartridges that are loaded into the jet prior to the mission. And so in the FA-18C, you can see threat rings of different SAM sites on the SA page. On the F-16C here, we have the HSD, which displays threat wings, rings to us, and of course we also have our RWR scope out here displaying an SA-6 out there, which matches up to the intel that's loaded into our mission computer showing an SA-6 in that position. Now, back in during the Vietnam era, uh, Randy Cunningham, the only U.S. Navy uh, fighter ace during the Vietnam War, always said that a SAM would never bring him down. But on the 10th of May, 1972, the SAM that did bring him down was an unseen one. And so I will guarantee you every single time, the SAM that you do not see is the one that's going to kill you. The SAM that you do see using sound tactics and sound practices will not kill you. I can guarantee you that. And so Brandy Cunningham learned that lesson the very much the hard way on the 10th of May, 1972, when he was shot down by an SA-2 that he didn't see. Now... Tactics and missiles have evolved since 1972, and a lot of the old documentaries that you see uh, around use tactics and ideas that were developed during the Vietnam War specifically to counter the SA-2 guideline, a very early missile, and so a lot of those things don't necessarily apply when, when flying against more uh, higher numbered SAMs like SA-6s, SA-11s, SA-10s, SA-15s, things like that. Now with an SA-2, because it is such a big telephone pole that can't turn very well coming up at you, turning into an SA-2 worked very, very well. Now with these higher numbered SAMs with higher performance and longer ranges, we don't want to do that so much. We want to really uh, make it an energy equation and we want to win and flip the tables of the energy equation from the SAM's uh, advantage to our own advantage in a fighter jet. So let's go ahead and continue on here. We'll get a SAM launched up at us and then we'll continue on with the discussion. Alrighty, so we'll go ahead and pause it right here. And first off, we can see a SAM launch out there. And because we have a good situational awareness uh, with us at the moment, we're able to know exactly where that SAM is coming from based on both our threat ring on our HSD, as well as our RWR picking, picking up active radar signals. And of course, we can look out and we can see the SAM launch over there. And that's incredibly important. Like I said before, the SAM you don't see is going to be the SAM that's going to kill you. Next thing we want to talk about here is if you are flying seed and you are out of harm missiles, you've expended them all, but there's still active radar sites out there and you gotta, gotta, gotta protect your strike package so they can get their bombs on target, what you want to do is you want to work inside the threat ring of your SAM uh, launcher or your SAM site in order to make sure that that SAM, goes at, SAM site goes after you, sees you as a threat because there are of course human beings on board and they don't want to get killed so they want to 
kill the most threatening aircraft they can see. So flying aggressively within the threat ring of the SAM site is going to make sure that that SAM engages you and not your strike package that you're trying to protect. So if you are flying in a strike package and your, your best defense against a SAM, instead of evading a SAM that's launched, is simply to evade and get out of the way of SAMs as much as possible and make sure that your uh, seed flights, who have now turned into wild weasels after expending their harms, are making sure they're taking the brunt of those SAM missiles for you because you're doing tedious, laborious tasks like lining up targets with a targeting pod and con continuing on dropping your bombs in a nice soft bomb run in order to get those laser-guided bombs on target. So uh, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at the F-10 map. And we'll take a look at our situation here. So basically we've got our SA-6 site out here. We've got an SA-6 gainful missile that has just been shot at us and is at the peak of its speed right now at 1,100 knots. And it's just been fired and it's coming up at us. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the current vector of our aircraft. The current vector of our aircraft is something about like this. The way, that's the way I set up the mission with this air start, and I didn't deviate off of that, so it's going to be something about like that. And so let's talk about why that's not a good position to be in. First of all, we are closing the distance between us and the SAM site rather than opening the distance. And so therefore we're making it easier on the SAM. And therefore we're not going to be able to flip that energy equation into our own uh, favor. It's going to always stay in the favor of that SAM. So first thing we want to do when we see a SAM launch that's out there, especially with one of those higher numbered SAM, SA6 and on up, uh, even Hawk batteries that uh, the uh, Iranians will employ on many multiplayer servers. First thing we want to do is we want to beam that missile. And so that means simply putting it so that we are flying exactly perpendicular to the flight path of the missile. So that's going to put us somewhere out around over here. And so we want to follow this black line, beaming the missile, and making sure that we're not giving the missile any advantage at all, and making sure as that missile comes up to intercept us, it's turning the entire time. It's all of its control surfaces are deflecting. As much control surface, surface as we can get to deflect, the better, because that's going to increase the drag on the missile, and it's going to therefore uh, kill the missile's energy as quickly as possible. And we also, even as that rocket motor is firing, we want to make sure we're making that rocket motor uh, do as much work as possible. We don't want to make let that SAM come up in a nice straight line. We want to make sure that, that SAM is curving and turning the entire time. Now the next best thing after beaming the missile is actually taking that beam and increasing it by 45 degrees. So instead of being out here, why don't we turn out to about out here? And so therefore, we're not only keeping the missile off of our side and it's having to turn and deflect its control surfaces the entire time it's coming out to intercept us, but it's all, we're also opening the distance. We're also making that missile fly a further distance to come out and intercept us. And so therefore we're killing the energy and bringing that energy equation into our favor even more. And so therefore we're able to uh, get away from that missile and spoof that missile as easily as possible. Now you guys may be thinking, well Spud, what if I just turn around and fly directly away from the missile? And yeah, that would be great, but it's not the best thing you can do. If it's the only thing you can do and it, you just need to just flat out run away from the missile, go for it. But the best thing you can do is beam the missile and then go for the 45 beyond that beam. Because if you just run directly away from the missile, that missile is following a nice straight line right to you and is chasing you down, and therefore the control surfaces aren't deflecting as much, and therefore you're not bleeding the energy quite as efficiently from that missile as you possibly could if you were flying that 45 past the perpendicular and making that missile intercept you. So just keep that in mind. Next thing we want to keep in mind and factor in here is the altitude at which we're flying at. Now this may seem a bit counterintuitive to you guys, and I really don't blame you for thinking that, but uh, we need to keep in mind that we don't want to be flying too high when we're trying to uh, wild weasel or avoid any uh, SAMs that are shot at us. And so the reason for that is, of course, I'm sure most of you guys know that down at sea level, air is at its densest place. And the higher you go up, the higher you get away from the surface of the Earth, the less dense the air becomes. And so therefore, we want to make the missile work as hard as possible to hit us, right? And so therefore, we want it to fly through as dense of air as possible. So it has to push through all that dense air to get out to us. 
If we are too high, we're gonna give the missile an advantage. It's gonna pop up, get into some nice clear, air, nice clear, less dense air, and be able to slice through it really easy to get to us. Now, we also wanna keep in mind that we do wanna have that missile make a vertical ascent because that's making the missile uh, work hard. But I would top your altitude out at about 10,000 feet when you're flying that wild weasel mission set in order to make sure that missile is working hard by launching vertically and going up, but also flying through more dense air and having to push its way through that dense air. So why don't we go ahead and head back to the cockpit and we'll continue on with this missile launch and then we'll talk about the next step. So as we're flying here, we're making sure that we keep an eye on that missile making sure that we're getting out to that 45 degree mark. Making sure we're making that missile work as hard as possible. All right, so looks like we got a bit of a new situation popping up here. First of all, we've got a second missile launch and we've got this first missile is now burned out of its rocket motor and is now flying uh, purely on kinetic energy. Now this is where we want to be. We want to have all this distance between us and the missile with its rocket motor burned out in order so that we can maneuver and drag that missile and pull all of its energy away and make that energy equation balance out into our favor again. The minute the speed of that missile drops below, comes to or drops below our speed, we've won. So that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that missile bleeds off its energy and to either equal your amount of energy or dip below it. And once that's happened, you next thing we wanna do is now that that missile is burnt out and the rocket motor is no longer firing, that's when we can start maneuvering off to the right. And we're going to maneuver off to the right to increase that distance even more and make sure that that missile, all the control surfaces keep deflecting and are doing different things. Now, of course, we see down here that we have a second missile launch and all we need to do is just keep maneuvering basically for this guy, and we're gonna be still opening up that distance more and more, making this rocket motor fire and, and work as hard as possible and keep working that way. So let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, another thing we should mention here is DCS World players have a tendency to over control the F-18 and F-16. And that is due to the FCS in both of those jets. The fly-by-wire systems allow you to yank the stick around without breaking the aircraft. And this basically allows you to bleed the energy off of your F-16 or off of your F-18 incredibly, incredibly fast, and thus putting you at a huge disadvantage in both air-to-air -air combat, as well as when you're avoiding SAMs just like this. A lot of those uh, tenets that apply to air-to-air -air combat and energy management in air-to-air -air combat also apply to when you're flying as a wild weasel or when you're just simply evading a SAM that shot at you. So being gentle and being smooth with your controls in the F-18 or the F-16 is just as important as when you're flying in an F-14 when you have that threat of potentially breaking your F-14. You're just not going to break it here in the F-18 or the F-16. So keep that in mind and very, really, really, really concentrate on being as gentle and smooth with your controls as possible in these fly-by-wire jets. As you're making these more violent maneuvers, definitely start releasing your chaff and flare. Okay, so here we are. How do we know that we've now defeated this missile? There's a few ways that we can check that out. So first way that we know that we've just defeated this first SAM that's coming up at us is we can see, if we unpause it here for a moment, we can see a horizontal movement of the missile. And these, of course, these labels help us out a lot and DCS world would really be impossible to analyze these kind of thing without these labels. That horizontal movement means that that missile is no longer tracking us. And therefore, we know that we can disregard that missile and just say, see ya buddy, and now worry about this missile down here that's still having his rocket motor firing. And I believe that that missile was spoofed just then. As we were making that violent turn out away from this missile, we were also popping chaff. And therefore, when you pop chaff and you beam the missile, 
you are getting into a point where the missile is very much confused. It's no longer seeing any movement from your aircraft in terms of a radar return as you're making that very violent maneuver and that very violent turn, as well as that chaff popping out is also starting to confuse the radar within that missile uh, seeker head. So keep that in mind when you're making those nice sharp maneuvers, always be popping out your chaff or your flares if it's an IR guided SAM or IR guided air to air missile. And uh, once you see horizontal movement with that missile, you know you, you've defeated it, disregard, and worry about the next threat. So we're still flying out here. And now we're gonna go ahead and turn all the way around that second missile that's flying up out at us. And why don't we take a look at that, that missile that's coming up at us. And so we can see here that the missile doesn't even have its nose out on us. And it's no longer, the rocket motor is no longer firing. We can see out there where that rocket motor stopped firing. And we can see it's already down to 572 knots. And so therefore, I believe that we are going to be able to easily, easily, easily outrun and uh, out to maneuver this SAM. We're going to make sure that that energy equation drops into our favor very, very quickly. Of course, as you guys know, fighter jets, F-16, F-14, F-18, SU-20s, doesn't matter. Any fighter jet with a jet engine in it, whether it's one or two or, or multiple, has a massive advantage over a SAM, and that is that we have an infinite source of energy, at least as with as much gas as we have. If we run out of gas, obviously we no longer have any source of energy. And so, uh, therefore, we can always increase and decrease our energy state at will, whereas a SAM flying up at us, once its rocket motor burns out, is working purely on kinetic energy, and therefore we can bleed it of energy and it won't be able to get it back. But therefore, we also have to keep in mind, keep an eye on that fuel gauge because A, you won't be able to get home and B, you won't be able to job, do your job effectively as a wild weasel, as a seed flight or as a strike flight um, if you're out of gas. So make sure you're using your afterburner as sparingly as possible. And as you can see here, we're now pretty far outside the threat wing of that SA-6. And so because we're doing a wild weasel tutorial as well here, we're gonna come back into the threat ring, make ourselves look like a threat to that SA-6, and make sure that that SA-6 is concentrating on us instead of our strike flights that we're trying to protect. So we're gonna put our nose directly on to that SA-6 site but we're gonna be very, very cognizant, keeping our SA aware that we are moving into the threat ring here. And once once we get a SAM launch, we're going to um, we're going to make sure that we put the SAM onto our beam, move out into the 45 degree past the beam to open up the distance and make that SAM work as hard as we can possibly make it. Also, one thing that you can do is if you see a SAM launch or you hear the RWR tone turn to a launch tone, if you immediately eject chaff and start releasing chaff right at the moment the missile is fired, you can sometimes spoof the missile right as it's coming off the rail and it's no longer a threat right there coming off the rail. So why don't we go ahead and try that? In this instance, it doesn't look like it worked, so we're gonna go ahead. And as you can see, I'm being very, very gentle with my control inputs into the FCS of the F-16. And therefore, we're not bleeding off energy nearly as fast as we would be if we were yanking that stick around and bringing that stick all the way back to it stops and making the FCS of the jet just completely kill our energy. The moment your energy drops below the energy of that missile and it's close to you, you're dead. So make sure you're being as gentle as possible and I'm really, really emphasizing that. Be gentle with the FCS and the F-18 and the F-16. Yes, you can yank it around, but that will kill you, whether you're in a dogfight or you're up against SAMs like this. So here's a new situation here. We've got two SAMs fired in quick succession. Now what's going on here? So basically the, the doctrine of SAM launches against enemy aircraft is that this first missile here 
is launched, and but it's not expected to hit anything. It's this guy is never going to hit anything uh, against a competent pilot. If that pilot sees the missile, he's going to avoid it. Now this second missile that's fired in close succession here, that's the kill missile. That's the kill shot, so to speak. And so that is the missile that's going to hit you when your energy state is low from avoiding this first missile and this guy's ready to just eat you up while your energy state is low. So therefore, when we have two missiles coming up at us just like this, it's incredibly important that we fall back to our fundamentals of SAM evasion and energy management and flipping that energy equation into our favor as possible. So let's go ahead and zoom back out and continue on with the fight here. And when we have two missiles coming up at us, don't be stingy with your chaff, man. Start pumping out that chaff. And it looks like we spoofed one missile, and that other second missile, that or that it looks like we actually spoofed the second missile with the chaff, but that first missile is still flying up out at us, which is an interesting um, development here. But we still got to worry about that first missile coming up at us. And we can see that that first missile is, yep, still coming up at us, but the rocket motor is no longer flying, firing. And we are still very, very far away from this missile and we're currently turning away from it so I believe we are going to be able to flip this equation uh, this energy equation into our favor and of course we have that second missile behind us the rocket motor is still firing but quite obviously it is no longer a threat so we don't have to worry about it and we're gonna go ahead and pop into afterburners here make sure we get away from that Sam as quickly as possible and we can see, boom, right there, it's self-destructed. So we are in the clear and good to go. Making sure that we are controlling our throttle to the best of our ability so that we do not get into a low fuel situation. And we're going to go ahead and climb up a little bit to make sure that missiles, those missiles work as hard as possible without getting into too thin of an air. Of a air. We're kind of bringing our nose in towards the SA-6 site because our idea here is to make that SA-6 site think we're a threat, right? And it looks like they're firing two at us again, just like before. We're gonna make sure we get to that beam position. Now we're gonna move out and walk ourselves out to that 45 degree position. Making sure we keep releasing chaff and flare here. As we get closer to that SAM site, oh, yep, looks like we just spoofed both of those missiles with a quick turn and releasing the chaff and flare. Very obvious horizontal movement, and we can see both of those missiles self-destruct. Perfect. All right, we're gonna make sure we get and rebuild our energy back up, and we're gonna turn back into our target here. Keep in mind the way the AI works in DCS world here is if you're in a strike package or you're flying in a seed flight, it's usually the SAM will the SAM AI will either lock on to the biggest threat that it sees or it will lock on to the leader of the flight. So the number one jet in the flight is usually going to be the one who has missiles fired at them the most. And if you watch my videos when I do multiplayer missions with people, you can see that quite a lot. Because I'm usually the leader and I'm usually absorbing all of those SAM shots. We're going to keep maneuvering the jet here. Always keep an eye on how many chaff you have left. Having that 90 chaff definitely helps. Alright, so we're going the other direction here. And we don't have that nice island for a good reference point for our 45 degree point, but we're going to do the best we possibly can here. And we can see that one missile is already spoofed. And we're see we're getting a little bit close here. And we spoofed it, coming up vertically, making that missile work harder, and releasing those chaff. So we're going to make sure we've get a bit further away from the SAM site now. We got a little bit close on that one and the rocket motor on those missiles were firing until very close to our jet. We got a little bit lucky there 
but we got out of the way of it through a bit of a more violent type maneuver that did bleed off quite a bit of energy. Alright, we'll make another move back towards the SAM site to get another salvo fired at us. We should be getting close here to them ha needing to reload. That was a pretty picture, flying through the sun there. <laughs> Alright, Sam is now looking at us again. Trying to acquire us. We're going to bring up the altitude a little bit more. Make sure we don't rise up above uh, Angels 100. And another SAM launch at us. Uh, for this one, we'll turn into the missile. And get that rocket motor working as hard as possible, making sure we're gentle on the controls. see we spoofed that missile and we've also spoofed this missile that's still coming up and we can see two self-destructs right there now as we did get a little bit closer there and we close the distance between the SAM site and ourselves in an effort to confuse the missile we did have to use a bit more afterburner there so keep that in mind and make sure you're paying it special attention to your fuel Now we're bringing our nose back over towards the SAM site to present ourselves as a threat because we do want to make sure that that SAM is firing upon us and not our strike package as they do their job in the nearby vicinity. We can always keep an eye on our threat ring to know exactly how close we are to that SAM site and make sure we don't get ourselves into too dangerous of a situation. There's another shot. And we'll move back to that beaming plus 45, making that missile work as hard as possible. Turning out around the missile, making sure that missile is still working, still working, still working. And now we're not even af in afterburner, so, but let's go ahead and take a look at those missiles, just to emphasize this even more. We've still got a heck of a lot of energy, and that missile is still coming fl flying straight out at us, but it's still pretty far away. It's got 662 knots of true airspeed behind it, and its buddy back behind it is doing about the same, and it's going to be about close to where that missile is going to be when it gets to the point that that missile is going to be. So, one thing we can do here is, as we keep these missiles coming out towards us out here to, on an intercept vector out here. If we turn off to the right again in another S turn, that'll bleed these missiles of energy even more. And for that turn, because we're down at about 440 knots, we're gonna go ahead and pop her into afterburner for just a second here to give us a little bit of boost, um, but without draining too much fuel. So keep in mind here that this we're also fighting our fuel gauges, making sure we have enough fuel to complete our mission as well as get ourselves home. But hopefully we've got a tanker out there, out there to uh, support us. Making sure we're not too violent with the FCS and the F-16. We don't want to kill our energy and put ourselves into a very, very bad situation. And there we go. Right there we've de defeated the missiles. So that second turn that we made off to the right again, absolutely killed those missiles. 
they, we are just too far away now for those missiles to do anything to us. And we can see, yep, we've completely turned the energy equation into our favor. We've got 490 knots, they've got about 480 knots. So as you guys can see, Flying Wild Weasel means making sound decisions in terms of your own fuel usage, the energy management you use in order to keep your energy higher than the SAM's energy, how to get that SAM to pay attention to you but without putting yourself in too dangerous of a situation. It's all about aeronautical decision making in the tactical environment. So it really is a thinking man's game and uh, it's incredibly fun and uh, that's certainly a bit scary so uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys will enjoy doing this uh, in real life missions in multiplayer servers so I think that our Sam Sites magazine is probably getting down to very little Yeah, so why don't we go ahead and check. We'll go over to our vehicle view. And it looks like our SAM launchers are completely and totally dry and are totally out of missiles. So there we go. We went and did our job. So keep in mind and remember that the definition of the suppression of enemy air defenses is different from the definition of destruction of enemy air defenses, which is different from the definition of wild weasel. And so we just used our wild weasel tactics against the SAM site in order to suppress the enemy air defenses and allow our uh, strike package and our strike flight to be able to uh, get in, hit their targets, and go home with minimal molestation from the SAM site. Now we did not conduct destruction of enemy air defenses because we didn't drop any bombs, we didn't fire any missiles, or anything like that. Keep in mind here that I have these GBU-10s on the wings here to simulate the weight of a harm missile. Now those GBU-10s are going to weigh even more than an AGM-88, but it's a good simulation to make sure that you're practicing these things in a less favorable situation than, than you would probably face in a multiplayer server or in a mission, with your jet being heavier, less gas, and all these things, and all these factors that come in to make your practice session more difficult than when you would uh, face something out there in the real world. So let's go ahead and take a look at one more situation, and that is the situation you find yourself surprised by a SAM site, and you're just too close to it, and you really need to make a last ditch maneuver, and that's kind of where we revert back to those old school ways of thinking about turning into the missile and pulling hard in order to eat the missile by over -Ging the missile and being able to turn inside the turn radius of that missile. So let's go ahead and uh, reset this mission and get started with that. Alrighty guys, here we are in a fresh jet with the mission reset. We still got our SA-6 site hanging out right here out in the same spot, but we've put ourselves into starting the mission um, a bit closer to the SAM site and a bit uh, laterally closer to the SAM site as well. And so this is kind of to simulate we're flying a strike flight right now, we're getting ready to drop our bombs, or we're ingressing to the target, or maybe we're even egressing away from the target, and we get surprised by a SAM. And now, once we get into that situation, like I said before, we're kind of reverting back to those older Vietnam-style um, type of SAM evasion tactics of turning and burning inside the radius of the uh, SAM that's coming up at you. Now this is something that's very, very difficult to do and uh, requires precise timing against higher numbered SAMs like SA-6s and above because they are more maneuverable and they are designed to be more maneuverable to hit fighter sized targets that are maneuvering around very quickly rather than those large lumbering B-52s that like the SA-2 uh, guideline was meant to uh, intercept and destroy back in the 1960s and 70s. So let's go ahead and continue. Now we're putting ourselves at as much of a disadvantage as we possibly can here in order to simulate this as best we can for you guys at home. Alright Sam, shoot. <laughs> Literally a dangling target right here. Okay, there we go. 
So here comes the SAM. First, we're gonna pause it and we're gonna go back to the F10 map just right here. Um, we've got our red dot here. That's our SA6 Gainful SAM, uh, which is a Cub uh, missile coming up at us. And that missile is, of course, going to fly out here. Its rocket motor is probably going to be burning the entire time and going to be coming out here to intercept us. Now, the idea here, and coming back to those old Vietnam-style tactics of turning inside the turning radius of, those, of that SAM, is this SAM is accelerating. And it's accelerating, 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 coming super fast out to, what did we say it's? highest uh, speed was back uh, uh, earlier in the first part of this mission, about um, 1,100 knots. And so therefore, our jet at, let's say, 400 knots is going to be able to have a tighter turning radius to turn inside the turning radius of this missile as this missile is trying to come around the outside and turn in into us. And so the idea here is we're just beating the missile at its own game. We have a smaller turn radius afforded to us by our slower speed. We're turning this missile's energy um, excess into its uh, deficit because it's not able to make that turn. Now, be extremely careful when it comes to SAMs and point defense like uh, TOR missile systems and Pantsir missile systems because those are going to be very short uh, range missiles that are incredibly maneuverable and made for exactly this situation. So just keep that in mind. And also when it comes to these situations, do not be stingy with your chaff. Pump as much chaff out there as you possibly can. If you pump the entire bucket out and you, and you survive because of that, perfect. Good job and get the heck out of there because now you're out of countermeasures and you just want to get out of there. So uh, keep that in mind here. And it's always about precise timing. You want to turn just right, not too early. All right, so obviously we could not see exactly what was happening there because I was too concentrated on performing the maneuver and was not able to actually look outside the cockpit and look at that missile and give you guys a good cinematic shot. But as you can see, we survived. We made that missile go streaking right past our tail. And you can see that what we did and what the way I described it and the way we did it, pumping out that chaff and making that tight turn worked exactly as advertised, which is incredibly important and is a very, very critical skill for any strike fighter pilot who's going over Indian country. So we can also see that the secondary missile that was out there, we can see him, uh, let me hop in the cockpit here, that might help a little bit. Um, we can see him right here. He was also spoofed by that hard turn and that pop and chaff. Now this missile, this first missile was beat completely aerodynamically. That missile was not able to track us through that tight turn because we simply beat it. It's got too much energy, its turning radius is never gonna match ours. But this missile out here, I believe, was spoofed by the dropping of the chaff and by um, beaming the missile and making it uh, basically drop off its radar because of zero relative motion between us and the missile as well as that big puff of chaff that came out. So at this point, we probably want to exfil the area as quickly and expeditiously as possible. At this point, fuel and and all of this stuff is not your primary concern. Get into the weeds, get into a valley, get behind something. Break that lock and get the heck out of there. Now, you can always know that you are out of the line of sight of a radar emitter, like a SAM site or even an enemy aircraft, when they drop off your RWR scope. A lot of people don't realize that, but as soon as you can't see their emission, your RWR can't see their emissions anymore, they can't see you. So now is a good time to hop back up to a more efficient altitude and get the heck out of here. And as we're opening up that range, we're going to continue to open up that range and get the heck out of there. Also, one thing to keep in mind here is when I made that tight turn inside of that SA-6, beating it aerodynamically with my tighter turn radius, I was not yanking on the stick 
very hard. I was just barely giving it a light touch with just my fingertips, really. If I had yanked that stick, I probably would have potentially gotten the jet. It, at best, I would have bled as much energy as I could conjure up uh, off of the jet. At worst, I could have gotten close to an accelerated stall and thus put myself at a huge disadvantage and that SA6 would have just absolutely shredded me. So keep that in mind that when you're in an FCS controlled jet like the F-18 and the F-16, that you're being very, very conscious of how you're controlling the jet. It requires just as much attention and just as much care as you would put into flying the F-14. And I know that I've been emphasizing that a lot, but that's definitely something that I see DCS World players get in trouble with a lot when they're flying the F-16 or the F-A-18. So I hope you guys like this video. I really hope it helps you guys avoid enemy SAM systems in the future. And I hope it helps you guys uh, come up with the idea of how to protect your strike flights and your strike packages when you're a seed flight and maybe you're out of harms or your harms aren't working for some reason. The guys forgot to pull the pins before you took off from the carrier or from the uh, arming pits on the uh, airfield. And uh, now you just need to protect your flight with yourself. And of course, back in the day, they would always say, you gotta be shitting me when it comes to this stuff. And it's definitely insane adrenaline pulse pounding stuff flying against a robot flying at Mach 5 trying to kill you, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, at least learned something and I really really hope it helps you out and makes you more survivable on the digital battlefields of multiplayer servers or campaigns if you're a single player guy. So uh, thanks a lot guys and of course fly safe.